What we looked at were the demands um, that people experience in those shared office spaces and, and in hot desking environments. Um, so looking at how um, levels of distraction, for example, and um, uncooperative behaviours might increase. Uh, we also looked at um, the quality of co-worker friendships and supervisor support because we really expected to find that those would increase as well. So although there perhaps would be more demands, there would also be more resources for those people in those shared environments. Um, but what we actually found was that co-worker friendships were perceived to be of lower quality um, and people perceived um, less supervisor support when they were um, in those really shared open plan environments. Whilst we didn't specifically look at this, there's other research which has um, shown that when people are overexposed to too much social interaction or feel distracted or stressed by nearby others, um, they respond by withdrawing. So perhaps keeping their conversations short and curt, uh, keeping their heads down, not engaging with others in a, in a friendly manner, um, being less cooperative and less collaborative. Um, so I suspect that that's probably what's happening when people are um, overexposed to those social interactions. Distraction increased as work environments became more shared, so the best situation was having your own office or perhaps just sharing with one or two others. Um, but once people were in big open plan environments, um, and particularly hot desking was the worst situation, um, the level of distraction increased um, and so did uh, negative interactions with others. So I think people maybe were a little bit more impolite um, and not as courteous when they are experiencing that kind of stress. Um, hot desking kind of is a bit next level because people also don't have their own space, so they can't personalise it, and I think... Um, I think being able to personalise your space and feel at home at work is really important to a lot of people. When we asked our respondents whether they had to work with others in a team, we found that those negative impacts really decreased or disappeared. So it's not working with others that's bad, it's working alongside others who, who you're not working with that seems to have that negative effect. They're noisy and distracting when there's no advantage, like there's no collaborative advantage because you don't need to interact with them, but you're getting the, um, you're getting the distraction and the noise. Um, and even if they're not noisy, just being seen and looking at others all the time is not as conducive to kind of concentrating. Um, I think doing really verbal work is probably something that's particularly impacted by hearing conversations of others. So that's, that's especially distracting. We didn't specifically um, look deeply enough to figure out why supervisor support decreased, um, but what we suspect, and we need to look at this a little bit more, um, is that when people don't work with their supervisors all the time and don't really have access to them, the time that they do have with them is more likely to be a dedicated supervision meeting. Um, and that would be perceived to be of higher quality uh, than just perhaps bumping into your supervisor every few hours or seeing them every day, but perhaps not really having a proper conversation or um, receiving supervision from them. We were using the job demand resource um, theoretical perspective of stress, which basically says that we become more stressed when we have more demands placed upon us. And so demands are things like workload, but demands are also any kind of distraction or um, anything which is stopping you from doing your work um, effectively and easily. Whilst resources are things which help you in your work um, or alternatively might provide a buffer for the demand. So the more resources you have and the fewer demands you have, the less um, strain you'll experience and the less stressed you'll be. Um, so we were expecting to find that you would have increased demands, but you'd also have increased resources. Um, so the finding that not only did you have increased demands, but also decreased resources in those open plan environments was quite striking. We were looking at social resources, so there's lots of resources that you have, you know, an, an, a fast computer and, um, you know, effective, uh, the right tools to do your job. These are, these are all resources that you have in a workplace, but we were looking at social resources. So we were specifically looking at um, the quality of co-worker friendships, so good friends that are useful and functional and don't, don't take up too much time, but do offer support when you require it. Um, as well as um, your perceived supervisor support. So how, um, how 
of, of what quality you perceive your supervisor support to be. So those were the resources that we were hoping would be um, improved by being in a shared environment, um, but which unfortunately didn't, didn't seem to be in our, in our study. We measured our demands with the employee social liability scale, which has four sub factors, which are um, distraction, uh, distrust, uncooperative behaviour and negative interactions. So we measured those four things um, and they all became worse as shared environments became more shared. Um, and then we met, we had two measures um, with you know five or six items in each one, looking at um, the quality of friendship. So asking questions like, you know, I can I can rely on my friends when I need them. Um, my friends offer, you know, collegial support and so on. Um, and also perceived supervisor support, which is things um, that that measure the quality of your supervisor supervision relationship. So yeah, so just items and scales and people were answering whether they agreed or disagreed on a like it type scale. While the, the best situation was to either have your own office or, or work from home, um, uh, I don't really think that it's realistic. Nobody um, believes that organisations are going to go back to giving people their own office. It's too expensive. Real estate is, um, you know, the cost of real estate is really high. So I think what needs to happen is there needs to be a little bit more thought put into how those open plan offices and workspaces are designed. Um, so th there are some really good case studies of thoughtfully um, designed workspaces which provide, um, for example, libraries which are silent or um, breakout rooms where people can go and chat more noisily, or bookable offices where if you need privacy and, and um, you know, need to sit and concentrate for a while, you have that privacy. Um, even though you perhaps don't have it all day, you, you can have it when you require it. Um, and I think that really is the, the direction that um, organisations are probably going to have to have to go. In general, I think um, relationships that are really functional functional in an organisation are ones where people have managed that relationship well in order to not let the friendship part of the relationship um, overshadow the work part of the relationship and vice versa. So I think where people really run into trouble with workplace friends is where they are experiencing some kind of conflict between the expectations that are placed on them um, at, for being a friend uh, and the expectations that are placed on them for being a colleague, and maybe those two expectations don't align. So for example, um, the expectation of confidentiality is something that we experience quite a lot in our work relationships. But keeping secrets from a friend kind of goes against the rules of being a good friend. Um, so those types of friendships, I think, can become quite difficult to manage. Um, one of the things that we looked at one of the questions that we asked um, was around, uh, so it was something like, um, my friend takes up time I would rather spend working. Um, so I think when people feel obliged to perhaps sacrifice their work time to um, counsel or look after a friend, that can kind of cause problems as well.